think I got her going. <laughs> we're in chapter 20. We're almost, uh, we're getting on the last stage of, of the book of Revelation. I think we stopped at verse 11. Is that correct? Okay. Verse 11. Uh, this is the, what's known as the, uh, uh, the great white throne judgment. And so let's look and see what it says. And I said, and, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Uh, and there, there was found no place for them. All right. This is the, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, this is the end of the, uh, of the, of the um, millennial. It's the end of the 7,000th year. Um, and we know we, we talked a lot about the millennial last week. The millennium, uh, the, it, was a, be a, it would be a time, uh, basically a time of peace. That the, the king of the prince of peace would, would be ruling and reigning there for that thousand years, ruling from Jerusalem. And mankind would still be uh, uh, on the earth. Uh, and, and they would still, those that were living on the earth until they accepted him would be li living uh, in with the old sin nature. There would be no Satan to bother them, to, uh, to bring up, we talked about that. Satan would, was, remember he was chained and put in the bottomless pit. I think it's called the abyss. And he wouldn't, he wasn't, he's not able to convince the nations to, uh, to rebel against God like, like he has, like he's doing right now, by the way. Uh, many nations today are trying to, are in the process of trying to uh, form a one world government that, uh, that in the long run, it'll be ruled and reigned by um, Satan's Antichrist. But, but at the end, of, and so even though, even though there's no Satan, even though there's, there'll be no um, uh, demons, you might say, uh, influence in the world, man's sin nature will still be there. The ones that are living on the earth that haven't, haven't died or haven't accepted Jesus as their Savior yet. They will still be living, living there, and they will have an opportunity to accept him as their Savior, just like we have, or uh, to rebel against that salvation. And um, I think what, if you stop and think about it, it'll be kind of like, I think, I think I'm sliding out of this chair. Let me see. Well, yeah, that's better. Um, if you think about it, uh, that's, that's the way na the, the sin nature is. Uh, and that's what that 1,000 years will be a time of, of uh, showing the, showing mankind that it, it, that the old sin nature is, is still there and that they still have to repent and come to him. It's not you can't be it's not like I said last week, Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it and that ain't, the devil don't make you do anything. Uh, he tempts you and he uh, puts things before you, but he don't make you do anything that you don't want to do. You have to, re, uh, you, he, can, he no more can he violate your uh, freedom of choice than, than God violates your freedom of choice. So the mankind of, and that, that last 1,000 years will still be uh, born with a sin nature and uh, they will have to come. Now, if you stop and think about it, what I was starting to say a while ago, over 1,000 years, you can imagine people will be living in peace, basically harmony. But the, the old sin nature will be there, and so some of them will start thinking, you know, especially toward the end of the thousand years, they will start thinking, well, we've been we've been ruled for this guy by this this Jew for a thousand years. I, I think we need to bring it to an end, and let's let's be free to do what we want to do. And so I think that that will start taking place when Satan is loosed, and he starts tempting these people to do this. But they will do it again. They will rebel against God, rebel against God, and so. The Lord basically takes care of business. Remember, we said it was a, a, a Gog and Magog. That may be the actual Gog and Magog war. If you stop and think about it, it does look more like the, the Gog and Magog that you see over in Ezekiel chapter 36, 37, and 38. Uh, because it says that the, that the pe people in Israel were dwelling in, in unwalled cities. Uh, and uh, they, that were, they felt safe because the Lord was ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. But uh, so if you think about it, it could be that that's exactly when the Gog and Magog battle will take place. Now, some people, uh, some people, and I'm not going to dispute them. I don't know. None of us do know knows when the battle will take place. But uh, 
some people believe that it will take place before the rapture. Some people believe it will take place before the tribulation. Uh, some people believe it will take place um, any time. But uh, right now, I tend to, tend to the reason, main reason is a few verses back last week we seen it called Gog and Magog. And that's the same thing that it's referred to in Ezekiel 30, 38, I believe it is, the battle of Gog and Magog. So uh, I, it's very possible that that battle will take place at the end of uh, at the end of the millennial, about a thousand years or plus, or maybe a few days or a few years from now. But anyhow, at the end of that, God sets up His throne, and and um, uh, there was no more place in heaven found for. Uh, it says here that even the face of the earth and the heavens fled away. Uh, I think what it means is. That's just my opinion of what it means that God was, his majesty is so great that you don't see anything when he's around except him uh, that fled away. Now, whether or not it means that that's, I believe there will be a new heaven and a new earth at the end of the millennial. And then maybe that's a reference to what that is, that that's what's coming. But he says there was no place found for them. Now, in verse 12, it says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the, dead in, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now this is interesting because we, obviously we're not, I would say we're not in this, um, in this, this judgment, the great white throne, uh, because we have already been judged. We have passed from death into life. Uh, but the, where we're, the, but I believe that it says all, all, uh, all of the dead, small and great, stand before God. All the dead, the, the dead that was res will be resurrected at the end of the millennium. Uh, that'll be, a, a, remember that we had the first resurrection, which was a rapture. Actually, the, the first resurrection was Jesus' resurrection. And then he resurrected some with him when he was come out of the tomb. <coughs> and... Uh, uh, of course, there's a couple other instances of resurrection in the Bible, but this was a, these were the first of resurrection to never die again. And um, but anyhow, uh, that took place at the at the uh, uh, at the uh, rapture, I believe. And whether you believe it took place at the beginning of the tribulation, in the middle of the tribulation, or at the end of the tribulation, you got pre, mid, and post tribulation believers. And I'm not going to get in a fight with them over w what date it is because. No man knows the day or the hour. It's like like the the marriage of the Jewish woman, uh, when 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 he come, when the bridegroom comes to get his bride, it's all decided by the Father. Even Jesus said, "No man knows the day or the hour, not even the Son of Man." Even what he was saying is, "Not even I don't know," but only the Father, which is in heaven. So when the Father tells uh, his Son to go get his bride, then that will happen. Whether it's pre, post, or mid, or whenever, or maybe some other time. I tend to believe it may happen uh, close to the beginning of the tribulation, but but maybe not right at. Some people believe that uh, the, the uh, uh, tribulation marks the beginning of the tribulation. Uh, the rapture marks the beginning of the tribulation. They don't. What marks the beginning of the tribulation is the uh, confirmation of a treaty between... Um, uh, I, get, I believe between the Arabs and possibly the Jews. That's when the tribulation begins, when they confirm a covenant of the way the Bible puts it. And you, you, could, start, you could start the stopwatch right then, you might say, for seven years. Uh, but anyhow, at the end of that, uh, then there's the, uh, Jesus will judge, uh, judge the, the, the tribulation saints at that time, but that's not what this is. He, uh, we talked about that. He will uh, bring all the nations before him and separate them like sheep from goats. Uh, and uh, I won't go into all that again, but that's, what, that's when that takes place. But this is different. This is a judgment of the lost, basically. All the other people that are not saved are resurrected. I think Old, Old Testament, New Testament, whatsoever, whoever, they're going to be judged now. It says the books were, well, books were opened, and I believe that possibly... Uh, those books were the, are the books of those people's lives. Uh, that's just a, a guesstimate. They don't say that, but I believe it's possibly what it was of what they did in their life. Uh, it basically is, is righteously showing the judgment that they deserve. 
because they uh, they will be judged, not because of the grace of Jesus uh, for dying of their sins, but they will be judged because of their unwillingness to accept it and and unwillingness to trust in God. And because of that, they will uh, they will have to be judged based on their works. And uh, according to that, no man can be saved by his own works. It's impossible. Uh, so I've always used this little analogy. Uh, well, if, if, you, if I could jump in the uh, in the West Coast with the intention of sw swimming to Hawaii, I don't think I'd make it very far. And uh, I don't even know if I could get out over my head. I might, but 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 that's that's how that's that's like living by your own rules and re your own rules and believing that's going to get you to heaven because it ain't. There's no way that you can live a life. Uh, that's pleasing to God. Jesus, uh, God's holy and righteous, and he cannot have any un unholiness and, and evil and unrighteousness before him. It has to be paid. And if, we, and if we don't allow Jesus' righteousness, his death, burial, and resurrection to pay for that, that debt, then the people have to pay for it themselves. That's the only other alternative. And that's what's taking place here. Uh, the books are their life history, you might say, what they did in their life, in their 20, 30, 40, 50 years, however long they lived on the face of the earth uh, during that period of time. They may live longer, actually, during that millennium. Uh, they, may, they may go back to living as, maybe as long as, uh, uh, close to as long as Adam and Eve did uh, because of, I believe the Lord will restore the uh, environment to the way it was then. Uh, that's the reason they live much longer. But irregardless, well, that's just my my belief. But irregardless, uh, at the end they get judged, and that's what the great white throne judgment is. He judges the world. He makes everybody everybody understands that they cannot, they have no defense that goes before the white great white throne judgment. There is no defense. Uh, they don't even have an advocate because the advocate would not be able to help them. Uh, we have an advocate, and that's Jesus. He is constantly before the Father when we fail and and uh, and and um, uh, pleading our case before the Father uh, that he says he says I paid for that debt that debt has already been paid that's what Jesus says to the Father basically uh, and uh, and so and and the Lord then declares us not guilty and righteous but anyhow it's not not anything that we do it's what Jesus does but anyhow these people, on the other hand, have no advocate. Uh, and it says also then there were, there's a, another book was opened. The books were opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So they were judged, they're judged by what's in those books, how they live their life. And that's the judgment that there will be a perfect judgment. God's love requires mercy. But God's right, God's holiness requires judgment. Uh, he cannot overlook, he cannot overlook unrighteousness. He cannot overlook sin. It's impossible for God to overlook sin. He won't overlook it. And so the only way that we can be saved is for our sins to be paid for by either by, by ourselves or by somebody else. It's kind of like a little story about uh, um, a, a judge, a guy was in front of a judge being judged for something, and he char He found, after the all was said and done, he, 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 uh, it was just a, a minor infraction or something. But he said he declared him guilty, and and set about the fine, whatever the fine was. And uh, the guy said, "Well, I." Ha the guy said, "I have I have no money." The judge pulled out the mo his money out of his pocket and paid the fine. It's kind of like that. That Jesus pays our fine. He has paid it in full. He's paid our debt. Uh, we don't we don't owe anything. In fact, not only did he pay our debt and set us free from the sin, but he gave us something else. He gave us his righteousness. Uh, we get a good deal on both ends of the stick. And Jesus, what did he get? He got our punishment and our sins laid on him. Uh, don't seem like a fair deal, but that's what Jesus does. He paid our debt. And so... But these people have no have no have no advocate. These people cannot uh, uh, have no way of of of, be, of being set free from their uh, their failures. 
And it says in verse 14, then, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, that's interesting. After once, after once the, there's death, and then after that, uh, it's, there's the resurrection. Here there is a second death, and it's the death of death and hell. In other words, what this is saying is death will no longer exist. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be put into the lake of fire, uh, just like, uh, just like the Satan and his angels. Uh, they will be cast into the lake of fire. And, and the scripture says this is the second death. Ain't, ain't it interesting to know that death can be, death can die? Will they get will come back? Will they come back like they are now, like a human body, or will they come back as a spirit? Oh, yeah, they'll be the ones that you mean here, the ones that are resurrected for the judgment. Yeah, well, I think they'll be bodily resurrected, but it won't be a bodily resurrection like the rapture. It's both. It's both. Both. It's anybody. So any, the dead has been resurrected. Not, not yet. No, not the only thing that, the only resurrection that will happen prior to that will be ours, the rapture. And then after that, after the end of the millennium, then everybody will be, that's not been resurrected, will be, and they'll face the judgment. Uh, you see, anybody that's on the earth that has saved Jesus during that thousand years, they won't go through it. They'll still be, uh, they'll still be uh, 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 like we were. Uh, they may, uh, maybe they will be raptured at that point too, just like we were. But the dead that have been, have uh, have not accepted Jesus and not entered into His kingdom, they will uh, uh, they will go to this white throne judgment. And uh, and uh, but I do to ask you, I, I believe it'll be a bodily resurrection, just like everything else. It's like all the other resurrections. Uh, the body will have to be joined with the spirit and, and to be judged. Any other questions? Okay. Judgment. What's the judgment? In other words, they're all going to be put in the fire. Yeah. So he's going to stand there and then judge them by what they did while they were alive. Yeah. And then put them in the fire. Right. There won't be no, they, in other words, he's doing that because you see, they won't, it, it, it's, he's righteous, and that's a righteous judgment to judge people because they, they chose not to accept the righteousness of Jesus, so they happen to be judged on their righteousness. That's the reason he's resurrecting them and presenting them and, and opening these books and showing them why they're being judged. Uh, that's the way I see it. Um, he couldn't do. I'm, I see what you're saying. They could just why, words, why not just put them in the fire and be done with it. Degrees. Like sometimes, if you get a judgment, you go to prison. Sometimes you, uh, you get put to death. Yeah. But this judgment, is no end. matter what about, no matter what your works were, this judgment is hell fire. Right. That's the way I see it. Now I do believe, uh, just as there are levels of of reward for the church. There's levels of punishment. Maybe they don't see as much. Maybe their punishment is not as severe in That's the fire. What I meant, is yeah. The judgment is it going to be less severe? Like just like I hope the child molester burns hotter than the, yeah. the one that was uh, cheating people. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> in other words, judgment is like. Yeah, there. Is, I, I do believe that there is there is different levels of judgment, just like there's different levels of reward. For, for the believers. Uh, but sin, sin is sin. sin, and the biggest sin is rejecting Jesus, and that's what I was looking to talk about with her. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, for, words, for, for God really doesn't see a murderer versus a, somebody that tells a white lie. To him, it's still sin. It's all the same in God's eyes, right? It's all sin. Everything. It's all sin. Uh, that's why it all goes into the Big part. That's why the, the judgment's the same for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, they will all, well, we'll, ask, we'll read on. We'll see maybe a little bit closer, I think. Uh, it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, that's that other book, was cast into the lake of fire. So that that's their end. That, uh, that's their judgment. If their names are not written in the book of life. I like, 
I don't know if it's the way it was, but I kind of like the way David Mills taught about the book. The book. He said that when you're, he believed that when you were born, your name was put in the book of life. Uh, when you were born, you, you were a live human being. And that because in places it talks about blotting out your name from the book of life in places in scripture. So he, he believed that, uh, that uh, once you got to what some people call the age of accountability, I don't know if that's the case or not, but that was their way of expressing it, uh, that, uh, that sin was found in you and you know you sinned and it was, it was, you knew you was guilty, then your name was blotted out until you accepted Jesus. If you accepted Jesus, then they would, the Lord would write your name back in the book. Uh, that's, that was kind of the way he explained it. And it, it makes it because... Uh, it, it, it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on when you look at it like that. But then that opens up that once saved, always saved, can it be blotted out again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do. If they, if they, if you believe once saved, always. Well, if you don't believe once saved, always saved. Then it could be blotted out again. It can be a thousand times, but yeah. I don't believe that. Only if you weren't ever really truly saved. Beg pardon? Only if you weren't ever really truly saved. Yeah. Well, if you never really were truly saved, saved, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been put in to begin with. Anyway. No. So when you know it's in there, when you're born. Well, he takes it out when when you become. Uh, I, his theory was it was blotted out when you got to the age of accountability, when you knew you were sinning, knew you were a, a sinner, and then your name was taken out until you accepted Jesus and it's put back in. He writes it back in, because in places it talks about writing and putting your name in the book of life. In other places, it talks about blotting your name out of the book of life. And it kind of goes along with that. Now, I don't know if that's the way it is or not. Do you think every name is blotted out then? It's some, that, every, that you can't really accept until you come to an age of accountability? Yeah, you have to know you're a sinner in order to be saved. Exactly. So every name is blotted out. Yeah, at some point in time. Yeah. If you go by that theory. Uh, it don't really say that in particular in the scripture. But if you go by that theory, that would be right. Any other comments yeah, or once, questions? Once you're saved, you're always saved. Yeah, that's right. I said, uh, once I have you clapped in my hand, that just lets you out. Yep. Yeah, well, that's right. When uh, once your name is once your name is written back in there, when you're saved, it's written back in there. It won't be blotted out again. Now, that's there's some there's some uh, churches that teach that that it can be blotted out again. I don't teach it, nor do I believe it. Well, that would be like. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, in other words, and we know that's not so. Yeah. So, it, I mean, you're either saved or you're not. Yeah. If, uh, uh, when you're saved, you have eternal life. If your name is then blotted out and you no longer have it, you no longer have eternal life. My theory is, how do you lose eternal life? If it's eternal, if you lose it, it was not eternal to begin with, I guess is a good way of putting it. I don't see how you could how how they can come up with that, but there are there are denominations that teach that. Don't you think that's probably based on that people appear to be God knows our hearts. Yeah. That people appear to be saved, yeah. but maybe they truly never were saved. And that's why they think, oh, they were in the lands for the life, and now they're blotted out. Yeah. There and, and there's they got some scriptures that uh, that they base it on. Uh, I think one of them is I can't remember. It's about like the. Uh, uh, like one of them is kind of the, I think it's the 10 virgins. Uh, but the five of them were there and they got to go in. The other five didn't have oil in their lamps and they did not get to go into the wedding ceremony. Uh, if you don't have the oil, that means you don't have, the oil always represents the spirit. And so that means if they didn't have oil in their lamps, they weren't, basically they weren't saved. That's, that's, that's the way I see it the five that didn't get to go in. The five that did get to go in that had oil in their lamps. That's, uh, that's one of the, that's one of the uh, theories that they use that they, uh, or one of the verses I think, I don't know some, maybe some of y'all know some of the other verses that they, uh, uh, that they teach. But I, I find it hard to believe if you're saved and, 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 and uh, uh, if you're saved and have known him, Yeah. Because he writes it in. Mm -hmm. yep. In other words, I'm, I, 
So, but whosoever was not found written were cast into the lake of fire. And that's the second death. Uh, that's when there will be no hope at that point in time for them, for those people that, and not just people, but Satan and the, and the demons and the, uh, um, the uh, fallen angels that followed Satan, all of them will be cast into the, uh, into the uh, lake of fire. Any questions? I think so. I think they probably were were in hell, but the, but the Lord brings them back out. If what hell would be for them then would be separation from God. Uh, they would be totally separated from Him. But God resurrects them. He resurrects them for the very purpose of showing them why they're being cast into the lake of fire. But they can confess then and come out and go to heaven. No, no, they're still there. Yeah, if they if they if God resurrects them. Uh, it's too late then. The judge, uh, they, uh, they've already lived their life, and they had the opportunity, and they and they turned it down. So they go back in. Yep. Right, yeah. God brings them out to judge them. That's what the great white throne is, okay. to show them why they're there, to show all creation that he is a just God. That's what he's doing. Okay. You might say, well, that's not just. It is just. Because they had, they had grace, they had opportunity. Now, you might say, well, what about the folks that never heard the gospel? There is, there is exceptions for that. I know, not really exceptions, that's not a good word. Uh, but uh, I think Paul or one of them taught that uh, even, even people that never heard the gospel, they're only judged by what they, or their judgment is judged whether or not they believe that there was a great a creator and tried to be obedient to him. They may never heard of Jesus, they may never heard of the gospel, but if, and and they may not have the uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in their lives. But you you see, that's the way that the Old Testament saints they never heard of Jesus. Uh, many of them, the folks that lived in the Old Testament, uh, they look for they have to look forward to the redemption, just like we have to look back to the redemption uh, in time. But it all it all took place at the cross. Any other com comment? I hope I explained what you thought. Roger, also in, in Luke 16, it talks about the rich man and the beggar. Yeah. And, and I think some of that, you know, when people died before Christ was crucified, they went to Hades, and there was a good part of Hades and a, 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 a place of torment. They, they could see each other. Across each other. And, and then Jesus, when he was crucified, went and took the believers to heaven, and then the people that had rejected Christ or in Hades, yeah. right? Yeah. Remember, he said, he said, have my brother uh, dip the finger in some water and touch my tongue with this, right. this fire and a torment. Right. So he was in the torment then. Yeah, so he, he was tormented. He, had, he wasn't cast into the lake of fire. Right. It's the final judgment. The final judgment is utterly and totally destruction right. in the face of God. Right. That's in Luke uh, chapter 16. Uh, I guess it starts in verse 19 through 31. Of what, what book? Uh, in Luke. In Luke? Luke. Yeah. yeah. If you want to read that, look, look it over, that would be a good one to kind of go help go along with what we're, say, we're saying here. Uh, but uh, but that's, the, remember, that's the the rich man and Lazarus story, some, some of y'all might know about it. Isn't that a parable? Pardon? Isn't that a parable? Well, some people say it's a parable, but since uh, since it's named as uh, since the guy's name is, is named as Lazarus, many people believe that's actually true. That's real. Uh, that it's not just a parable. Uh, that Lord, the Lord is taken, telling what something that happened to a guy by the name of Lazarus. Uh, all the other parables, they never name anybody. But this is the one, the one that you actually name a person. So uh, there, many people believe that, that's, that that is a true instance. But wasn't one of the uh, prophecies of the Christ that he would always teach in parables? Yeah, yeah, for for the for the people, but he would teach he would teach the his disciples. It was a certain time in uh, uh, Matthew that uh, he he started teaching in parables. 
because of, because of the people's rejection and the people's unwilling hard headedness and so forth. But uh, but uh, if you, I'm not going to argue argue that it's not, that it's not a parable. It could be, but many people argue that it's a true story because of because the guy's name is named as Lazarus, and so it's a true story. Uh, that's that's what many believe. I tend to believe it too myself. That that uh, Jesus was telling those people what happened for La to uh, uh, to um, to Lazarus and what what it's like. So you know you know there is the chasm uh, between them that they can see each other. I don't know that that will be in in eternity uh, that we'll be able to see each other. Uh, I think kind of like Phil said that when Jesus died and resurrected, he took those that were in uh, that. Uh, paradise. paradise yeah that's what Jesus called it paradise that he took them to be in, in heaven in a different location that's again that's debatable I mean that it's not really debatable it's what Jesus said uh, that he the, what what he said that he would bring the captives free uh, and I think in Luke the latter part of the book of Luke I might be wrong it's one of the books he talks about uh, uh, bringing, bringing uh, the saints with him or, or delivering the saints from Hades or not from Hades but from, uh, from judgment and there's scripture you know that he's absent from the body is to be present with the Lord yeah. if you're a Christian when you die you go, your spirit goes to be with the Lord right. I, do, I believe that the, reason, the main reason I believe that is what Jesus said on the cross he told the thief on the cross that today you will be with me in paradise. Not tomorrow, not when I'm resurrected, but today. The day that he, when Jesus died, uh, his spirit went into paradise and that, and, and that, uh, and that uh, man on the cross went with him. When he was, in fact, he probably went first because he was already dead. But, uh, uh, but that's when it takes place. You might, it's hard for us to understand because we don't, we've never, we've never, is we're talking about something we've never experienced, and uh, but that's the way I see it. Well, when Jesus comes back, there's still going to be people saved. Yeah, absolutely. When He's ruling for a thousand years, there's still going to be people saved, and there'll be some people that won't be saved. They will also be in that judgment, I believe, that great white throne judgment. Uh, Yeah, that you've accepted Jesus as your Savior and that you trust in Him. Let Him be Lord. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Hard to talk about, hard to talk about something that you've never experienced, but that's what we're talking about here. But it's what the Lord has revealed to us in His Word. And the best we can do is try to interpret it by his spirit and understand what's going on. All right. So then let's go to the next chapter where we got, well, we can do an introduction to chapter 21. Chapter 21. Oh, I just shut it down. Chapter 21 is uh, victory, the victory, the victory chapter. Uh, it tells what happens after the millennium. You remember a while ago we said in chapter 20 that the head, heaven and earth fled away from the presence of God at the great white throne judgment. I believe it's basically that his, his presence was so aw awesome that nothing else mattered. And, uh, but here you see that there's a new heaven and a new earth. For the, heaven and the, first, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. So God's really making things different. He really... He's really re-establishing re uh, the, um, uh, the um, I believe, is the new heaven and the new earth is talking about uh, a heaven that's going to be like it was even more so, uh, like it was in at Garden of Eden. Uh, he's turning everything back to what it was or what it should have been all along. Uh, and he's making a new heaven and a new earth for us for those that have accepted him as their Savior, for those that have been redeemed by the work of his Son, 
uh, that they will there will be. It says, interesting. It says there was new and there was no more sea. As uh, I don't really understand that. A lot of people that like to go to the beach, they might not like that, but yeah. But when it says that there was no more sea, and I you know, back up there in thirteen, the sea gave up their dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In other words. That's right. Uh, but anyhow, the uh, uh, there was a it's a new heaven and earth. God, uh, the God re regenerates it and makes it new. Uh, I think I, I I think I've heard a guy study on the word new here, new heaven and a new earth. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up here right quick. I don't know if I hit the right one and get first new. Where's the word new? There it is. It says new or an uncertain affinity, a new, uh, especially in freshness. In other words, I believe it's kind of like a, I think the Lord makes the takes the earth and He makes it, recreates it or regenerates it or or forms it into a new a new earth. And gets rid of all the the bad stuff from the earth, and and remakes it into a new heaven and a new earth. It's kind of like uh, uh, taking an old car and running through the thing and crushing it and smelting it down and taking that metal and making a new car. It's still the same thing. It's still the same uh, material, but it's completely new and formed. Uh, that's the way I look at it. It says uh, with respect to a is. Proper, so properly with respect to age, new. In other words, it's it's a new. Uh, it's like, well, best I can say is new. It's it's not <laughs> it's not been used before. Uh, but anyhow, uh, and and new heaven also, uh, and that's the heaven that we will dwell in. Uh, it's kind of like Jesus when uh, when he was resurrected. Uh, he sometimes he was in heaven, and sometimes he was with people on the earth, his disciples. Uh, and, and so I think that that's the way we will be. We will be uh, in heaven, and we will also be able to uh, live, on, live on the earth as, as, uh, as new creations because the earth's new. Everything else is new, and earth will be like heaven. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. That's the way I see it. And I saw... A really, good book, excuse me, a really good book about heaven was written by Randy Alcorn. Mm-hmm really gives a good explanation about the resurrected body and the resurrected earth yeah. and everything being made new and, yeah. it, and it really you know we see shadows of the way the earth was originally intended to be yeah you know, but we destroyed it and polluted it and everything else but like you said it's going to be destroyed with fire and be, and be yeah. made new so it's a really really good book if you're interested in knowing what heaven is going to be like yeah. it's by randy alcorn yeah might want to take a look at that book but uh, but yeah, that's what it is. It's kind of like it's just like kind of like when we are resurrected, we have we receive a new a new body, right? But I still believe that we will be no, it, the scripture says that we will be known as we were known. So we will be resurrected. We will have a new body, but it will still be uh, it will it will still be us. It won't be somebody else. It will still be us, but it'll be a, a new body, uh, just like uh, just like the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, I believe we will know people in heaven. Uh, this is just, uh, I think that the Bible holds, holds true with that. Uh, the reason, one of the main reasons is what we talked about a while ago when we talked about Lazarus. Uh, he had a name. He was known. Uh, the rich man was able to recognize him and, uh, and knew who he was. And I believe that we will recognize uh, other folks that we knew on earth when we go, when we go to heaven. And um, so uh, it won't be a, uh, some people, uh, I think, especially in the world, uh, if they believe anything like angels and stuff like that, they just dream up all ideas about what they believe. Uh, but they, uh, some of them say, I think some of them see just a spirit thing that they just kind of floating around and influence other people and they're not really a person. I don't believe that. Uh, if, they, if, they're, if they're seeing anything, it's demons. Uh, what 
of what the what we will be like is what Jesus was like when he was resurrected. He paved the way so that we could follow him, and we will uh, we will go through the we go through the same the same uh, uh, path that he made. Uh, he was he died, uh, and we died with him, by the way, and we were crucified with him, and we were resurrected with him. And if we've accepted him as our savior, we've already done that. We've already been through all of that. So death has no hold on us. We've already died and been resurrected into a new life. Uh, but we still live in a sin-cursed, influenced body. But the Lord's going to take care of that someday, too, by the, by the resurrection. But anyhow, it says, and I, well, we better stop there. We'll pick it up at verse 3 uh, next Sunday. But uh, this is the good chapter. This is the final book. Uh, verse. This is the final uh uh, chapter in the in the Bible, uh, and we're going to see that, that we're going to see that we win, or that the Lord wins. I should put it like that. Uh, and we're uh, going to get an idea of what I mean by Genesis and Revelation are bookends. Much more in this last chapter. Let's all stand. Dear Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob creator and maker of this universe. You have, you have uh, worked out our salvation, our plan of salvation for each one of us so that we can be with you forever and ever. And we just, I just praise you, Father, for it. As we are studying here today about what we have to look forward to and a new, a new body that's not cursed with sicknesses or pain or sorrow, but a, a body that we can, we can worship and praise your name forever and ever. And we just, we just thank you, Father, for it. We ask you to be, again, with all those on our prayer list and, and meet their need according to your will, give healing and restoration or whatever the need might be, and we'll praise you, Father, for it. Be with our pastor as he brings a message. Bless him and his family in the days ahead and guide this congregation. And I pray now a blessing over everyone here. Yavarechacha Adonai Vaishmarecha Yeer Adonai Panavilecha Vilkanecha Yesa Adonai Panavilecha Vyasimlecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good to have you all today. <laughs>